Hello, I'm your host, Denise Rojas. Old Man Winter is on his way, and he is destined to make your life miserable. This year, he's found an accomplice, and we're going to help you fight back. Dan and I had a brush with serendipity. We picked up this load of partially recycled corrugated cardboard for a project and something really, really cool happened, literally. Dan is gonna tell you the rest of the story. We were driving around in this van. It doesn't have an air conditioner. It's an old beat up van that we used to pick up all of our science junk with. The cardboard recycling company had just loaded it in the back and part of it was hanging out. So the back of the van was partially open. We had tied it down. It was hot, we had the windows down. We both noticed when we started driving that all of a sudden cool air started blowing on the back of us. Now, the cardboard was pushed right up behind us. I put my hand back on the stack of cardboard and noticed ice cold air was flowing out of it. What had happened was the cardboard company, they don't like their stock to absorb moisture. So they have it really cold in there. Their air conditioners pull all the moisture out. Now, that stack had sat in there for probably a month, who knows how long, but the stack was about 65 degrees when they put it in the back of the van. As we were driving, the air from driving was blowing up the back, going through the corrugated cardboard and coming out the front, releasing ice cold air on the back of us. Now, that gave me an idea. If cardboard or corrugated material is capable of transferring cold that well, why not heat? I have a huge piece of corrugated cardboard here, and what I've done I painted one side black. Now this is the side that the sun's gonna hit. This gets really hot when it's sitting out in the yard in the sun. Now, I know you're saying, hey, cardboard, man, eh, that's not waterproof. Well, this is just, uh, to give you an idea, this is a simple experiment that we're gonna be doing. You can call this a poor man's heater if you want. There's material out there that is waterproof that I'm gonna tell you about at the end of this video. I'm also gonna be sharing with you an idea on how to get some of that stuff for free in about a month or so. So this is just to give you an example. The process would be the same. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build a frame for this to seal these ends off and we're also gonna be making channels on the end. That way we can take the air in from one side and out through the other. So air is gonna come from your house through this and then come back down again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a two by four like this. Now this two by four has been split right down the middle. The measurements for that is a little bit less than one and three quarters because you have to accommodate for the width of the blade. Now, once you have this split, you're gonna end up with a square that looks something like this. Now, what you're gonna wanna do from that point, set your blade for one inch, you're gonna run a cut down to put a cut here, then you're gonna flip the wood and you're gonna put a cut here and you're gonna have a cutout piece that looks something like this. got your pieces with the cutout like this. For a big sheet like that, you're gonna need two, two by fours, four pieces. You can use pressure treated wood for this. Um, if it's gonna be outside, pressure treated wood works good. The problem with pressure treated wood, even though you get a perfectly straight piece, sometimes when you rip it, they do some really weird things and they get such wild curves, you just can't work with it. So if you're gonna use regular pine like I did here, which cuts pretty good, ends up pretty good, you're going to want to coat this with several coats of Thompson's water seal or any water sealer. You're also going to want to then take an enamel black spray paint. Just load it. Get it as black, dark color as you can because the additional heat that this absorbs will be helpful to your project. Then you're going to want to put a clear coat on it to seal it up. And with the sun and everything, this should last several years. You shouldn't have any problems with it if you put enough coating on it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the part of the wood, you're going to put the widest part, you've got, you're going to have a narrow back, you're going to put the widest part on the floor, and then you're going to line your cardboard or whatever board you're using up. You're going to take your pencil and you're going to mark an area right where the, exactly where the corner goes. You're going to do this on both sides. Okay, so I've got my pieces cut now. I've got the channels ready to go. 
and I've got the really long ones and then the shorter ones are going to be the one where the board is going to stop right there. It's going to stop right up against there. Then we're going to seal it off so the air is going to flow down into this channel here. And I have a video. The video is right there, that link. There's, it's a two-part video that shows you how to put these together. Basically shows you this process. It's a little different. It's for Canvas. Go ahead and look at that video when you get a chance, and that'll show you how to put these together. Uh, I'm going to frame this up and we're going to drop it in. We've got the frame put together. Hopefully you watched that video and you saw how to do it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this sheet in. I'm going to put it with the black side up. I've got the outer part of the frame, the flat part down. I've got the ridge up. We're just going to drop this in. This right here is the part that we're going to close off. So what you're going to want to do, you got the channels over here. So the air is going to run from the, the, the one side down the length, come out the other side. Now, on all four corners, what you're going to want to do, I'm going to pull this up and show you. Right in there, right in this corner, you're going to want to put some silicone in there because you want to block this channel. You don't want the air. The air will naturally take the path of least resistance. So you want to block this channel off. Put a dab of silicone on all four sides. Now, you have your corrugated channel here coming down. And then that drops right down in there. So right now, it's dead ending into the channel here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole here and pick that channel up. We're going to drill a hole on the other side. So when we add air, it's going to go through all the channels, come down, and they're going to all meet back here. One quick note. You want to go ahead and drill your hole in the center to meet up with this channel. And to make it super efficient, you can add two or three holes on the input end. That'll make sure you circulate the air more efficiently across the different channels. I'm just going to be using this. I'm going to be using a vacuum, the blower from a vacuum for this. We'll get into blowers in a little bit later, but this is just for the testing part. So for mine, I'm just going to be using a typical vacuum put it on the blower setting. So I'm just going to be putting this here. Now I'm going to be taking a paddle bit, drilling a hole so this fits snugly in there. Then we're going to be sealing it, and that is going to be meeting up with the channel. I'll show you how that works. That one's even better. Now, once you have the second channel done, you're pretty much ready to go. You just want to line the board up and put your frame in. If you have a hose that's bigger, instead of doing a thinner frame like this, you just want to raise the height. This way you can put it, drill a bigger hole in, add a bigger hose. You'll get more length across the channel and you'll get more volume that way. Now it's time to sandwich our board in place. So we take our cut rails. I'm going to show you how to do the first one. We're going to do this again. Now you should have a bead of silicone in here if you're doing it for real. So what we're going to do, we're going to start this. This is the fine drywall screw. You can see that the threads are really fine. And you don't want it to poke out the other side. So to do that trick again, all you do, you start your drilling process. You get it part way in, reverse your drill. That provides a hole so you can press and then you back drill the screw in and then you proceed to grab it. So all you're doing is you're just stripping this first layer out. Otherwise, this wood's gonna split when that screw goes in and spreads it. All right, our blower hose is down there. It's actually hooked to the exhaust of a vacuum. And we are way down here. I have the exhaust hole. I'm going to use some sawdust to see how that exhausts. I'm going to plug this in. Keep in mind it's running all the way down the channel. So we know the air is traveling through there good. Now tomorrow, when the sun comes back out, hopefully it's out. It wasn't out at all today, except for a little bit. We're going to see how this heats up air. Windows that get direct sunlight, just like this one, can add a lot of heat to your house. Some people actually make the mistake of blocking this out. What Denise was referring to is a forced air window heater. What those are is a giant metal box painted black that circulates air across the black metal and it replaces your window. The problem that I have with them is first, they're not very attractive. Secondly, 
they're metal. Now, if you live in northern climates or you have a well-insulated house, you have this. This is a double-paned window. You've got a piece of glass with another piece of glass with a barrier in between it, and this insulates very, very well. If you take this window out and you replace it with a big black metal container on the outside, it will heat up during the day, but at nighttime you're going to have a freezer. Also, it's very difficult to seal your house like these windows can with those units, so you're going to have some drafts, you're going to have a lot of issues to take care of. Also, they do not add extra surface area to your house. What ends up happening is the light that would normally come into your house and heat up pillows, curtains, whatever may be in there, will not be there. It'll just be against that black metal. So it really doesn't help you. It, you pretty much end up with a net zero because that light would have come in anyways. Now what we're doing, we're putting this on the roof. So we're taking heat that would have otherwise just fallen on your roof and we're circulating that through your house. So we're technically adding whatever surface area of board you use to the inside of your house. Two minutes. This has been sitting out here for 20 minutes and it's already over 150 degrees with the surface temperature. It's just amazing how quickly uh, you, it picked up the heat. You can actually, you could actually hear it like just readjusting. The, the, the whole board would move just from the heat change when I brought it from outside. Now this thermometer right now is saying 88 degrees. Now keep in mind for your uh, project, you probably want multiple import holes because What's going to happen, a majority of the air is probably going to just travel down the center. But since these are so shallow, a lot of it will go this way. I've actually ran tests on the end, and you get about 20% here, 30%, 40%, and it kind of goes outward. So if you had three inlets versus one, you get more efficiency out of this. So this is uh, almost four square meters. So average is about 4,000 watts if everything works out. All right, so we got up to 135 degrees. You can see that it's holding at 135, 136 degrees. Now there is, there's pretty good, I mean, there's a pretty good breeze right there. And the temperature, now there's a cloud over and it instantly dropped to 129, 130. 
131. I mean, this is amazing. This is just, this will just run 130, 130 with air running through it all day long. So if you want 130 degree air blowing in your house, easy solution. We saw with this piece of cardboard, we were able to get 135 degrees of constant air. The air coming in was 90 degrees, so it raised it by 45 degrees. Now cardboard's not gonna work outside, obviously. There's a material called Coroplast. You can go to any sign shop and pick it up. It actually comes in black, which is the color that you want, or you can get any color, spray paint it. Now, the interesting thing about Coroplast, I'll have some links on my website of where you can get it. Any sign shop's gonna carry it. This is election season. So anytime that you see those political signs out there, they're made out of that material. Now, I'm not saying to go take the signs before the elections are over with. That wouldn't be right. But what I am saying is after the elections are over, they're pretty much considered trash. So there is hundreds of thousands of square meters of sign material that's just gonna be thrown away. Why not take it and make an interesting heater? I encourage you guys to uh, send in some video responses on different ideas with this. You've got the basics for it. Ways of keeping snow off of it, maybe putting an acrylic sheet over it. Whatever you have, send me a video response and uh, we'll add it and we'll see what everybody comes up with. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.